Welcome back guys to Kerbal Space Explosion. So we are messing around with the Rapier engine, which I just unlocked relatively recently and I've never used it before. If you missed last episode, I recommend you watch it because I, uh, I made a ridiculous space plane with like 11 of these things. And if you're not familiar, the Rapier engine will switch dynamically from being a jet engine to a rocket engine, from being air breathing to using oxidizer. So it, it's a really cool engine and it also has pretty good efficiency. And so I wanted to mess around with it and we're going to eventually, we're gonna make a ship that's gonna take us to Drace, a, a space plane. I've never done a single stage to orbit space plane. And so I, I thought this would be a fun time to do it now that I've unlocked this part, which makes space planes much easier to be honest, because you don't have to have multiple types of engines on your ship. Okay, landing gear up. So this guy, this is a super simple ship. He's a little bit front heavy. I probably either need to move the wings forward. You can see when I let go, he tips down pretty dramatically. I have to basically hold back. Uh, I've, I even have a, where is it? Oh no, this this one does not have the um, the reaction wheels, but I have, to, I have to hold back continually to keep this guy's nose above level. And I either would need to move the wings forward or put canards on the front here to make him a little bit more maneuverable. But I, I just wanted to start with something a little smaller today. Uh, before we get to the more advanced thing. And I wanted to try and do a flyby here. If I can even do that without falling into the ocean. I did that at the end of last episode. It was a little, it was a little bit embarrassing. I tried to spin around too quickly and lost control. And I'm... I don't want to do that again. Yeah, this is not the most balanced. Even though he's simple and small, not the most well-designed space plane. It's not all about having it be small and uh, not weigh lots. Uh-oh, we're falling. Pull that nose up. Okay, anyway, this guy's a pain in the butt to drive, so let's just uh, let's get on to the next one. <laughs> Sploosh! All right, enough goofing around. This is my single stage to orbit space plane, and I call it, let's put the brakes on so we don't use up too much of the runway. I call it the nose cone Mark III. And why is it the nose cone? Why? Because it's going to attach to the rest of our ship once it gets into orbit. It's gonna dock with an interplanetary stage, and then we're gonna go to Drace, and then it's gonna undock. We may land on Drace, I've got landing legs on it, or we may just pick up the guy and come back, because I already have a lot of science from there. We don't necessarily need to land with him. Uh, we'll see what mood strikes me when we get there. Now, these things, I've never used these before. These are like uh, called structural wing something. I, I don't remember. But they actually act as decouplers. You can see I have a little stage here. There's no icon, but they act as decouplers. Should I accidentally hit the space bar, we will lose our engines. So this ship may look a little funny, but it actually flies really well. And wait till we get up to about 100 meters per second, which is happening quite quickly, you can see. I will show you how well it maneuvers. And part of that is because we put the canards on the front. Part of that's because we have the two rapier engines spread apart like that. Watch this. Joing! <laughs> yep, it can climb vertically. Vertical. We could do a vertical takeoff with this guy. This isn't the most efficient way to climb. A more efficient, I found, is about about like that. And so what we're gonna do now, Tombo Kerman is on a mission to rescue a friend. I think Tombo may have been on the mission to Drace so long ago. Let's zoom out while he's doing that because he's gonna be doing that a while. Let's take a look at our asteroids. C, C-class, C-class, all C-class still. We will get into asteroids eventually. Uh, we're going out to here, to Elu, the uh, Dresstacular, where we left one of our guys in EVA orbit. We're going to pick him up because he's he's been out there long enough circling around the planet without any control over his destiny. Uh, I think Tombo may have been on that mission. I don't exactly remember. But, okay, so what we need to do to get this guy into orbit, this is much more time consuming than getting a, a rocket into orbit. We're gonna climb up to about 
12,000 meters or so. You can see right here, it says intake 0.18 out of 0.20. And that will continue to diminish as we climb out of the atmosphere and it gets thinner and thinner. Uh, we're going to get, you can see right here, our flow is diminishing. As When that gets too low, the rapier engines will switch over from air breathing mode to basically jet engine mode, or, or to rocket engine mode. Now, the cool thing about this particular design is I have this adapter here, which goes from these jet cockpits to this super flat uh, Rocco Max X208 fuel tank. The reason I did that uh, was because I was thinking, what's a way for me to put more than one of these docking clamps together and have them be guaranteed to be the same size apart? I think one of the things that went wrong with the ship to Eve, where not all the docking clamps connected, is that uh, I was using different parts. I used fuel tanks for the top part and then I use those structural fuselages for the bottom part and I think they're very slightly different in diameter and so things weren't lining up properly and so I thought I could use this guy this little uh I forget what this part's called but it goes from the big tank to two of the smaller ones and then I just put these clampatrons on there oh look at that we're almost up to 9,000 it's not that slow but I thought that would be a cool way to connect two ships because I can repeat this exactly on either side without too much trouble. So I thought I'll use this little fuel tank here and then we've got this adapter. This adapter only has liquid fuel, no oxidizer. And so that's gonna get used up before we start using the oxidizer from our rocket tanks. Okay, we're up to about 12,000. At this point, we're gonna mostly level off and we're going to slowly gain speed. This is different from most um, methods to get into orbit in that we're going to be going mostly horizontally because we want to stay in the atmosphere in this efficient jet engine mode as long as possible. You can see right here our specific impulse is 1600. That's twice as good as the the nuclear engines we use to go from planet to planet that are so good for stuff. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep this prograde vector just above just above horizontal you can see right there, it's just below horizontal. I want it to be above that so that we're climbing very steadily like this and we're picking up speed slowly. And by the time we get to the point where our ram air intakes aren't enough, hopefully we'll be going fast enough that it won't take much fuel to get into orbit. All right, it just switched to the closed cycle mode at right at 25,000 meters. And we still have 0.02 intake, which uh, I guess is not enough. We are now draining oxidizer. We're basically out of the thick part of the atmosphere as soon as we cross over this line between the medium blue and the dark blue. So I'm actually going to keep it kind of where it is. I'm going to tip up a little bit because I want to hurry up and get out of that thick part. Uh, but then we're just going to level off because the air resistance is so little that it kind of doesn't matter. We're already going quickly. Yeah, okay, now we're high, so now I'm going to level off, like this. Pretty good, we're still on our first stage, we're still, okay, we've gone through that tank, now we're using this tank, and we're going to rendezvous with another stage, and that will allow us to refuel this guy, so all we need to do is actually just get this guy into orbit. That's pretty good, there's our fuel Gemini. Actually, we could even dock with him to refuel if we wanted or actually, no, we couldn't, because this guy isn't set up to dock with him. The docking situation is <laughs> very specific. Um, whoops, I didn't think about that. But uh, it's okay. We, I don't think we'll need it. We'll be able to refuel this thing, which is our lander and our, uh, our jet plane, with our interplanetary stage, which should have some fuel left over. And I've got some passive solar panels on here. That is to fuel this guy, the inline reaction wheel. And I also have a, uh, a battery pack there. All the things you would need. And then we've got under here, uh, I put some accelerometers and gravioli detectors. I don't have any strange goo or science juniors. We just have the, the very small portable science stuff. Besides, I've already been to where we're going. And so that would be duplicate science that we would be getting with those. The only thing I didn't have at the time, I don't think I had, I did definitely did not have the gravioli detector. And I'm not sure if I had the accelerometers or not. Probably I did. Because I, 
I, I probably wanted to get those quickly. Let's see how close were the apoapsis. Uh, I wanted to get those quickly, I would guess, if I don't really remember, but I would guess I wanted to get those quickly to get more science permission. Okay, let's set up a node. So uh, maneuver nodes are a little bit different. Well, they've added a few things, I guess I should say. Let's go wink. 783, seven, oh yeah, that's pretty much perfect. So you can see right here, there's a little X mark. You can now cancel these without switching back to the map screen. You can cancel them right here, which is pretty nice, pretty nice. That's a burn of 11 seconds. And we'll just stay in one time speed. And that should, should uh, be fine. We should have plenty of fuel for that. And then we'll have a little bit extra to fine tune our rendezvous. And we also have RCS. As you can see right there, here we go. Okay. And just keep right on that target. He wants to tip down for whatever reason. And then we can close it from there, which is pretty neat. And I didn't quite do enough. Whoops, 73, 75. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, another thing they've done is you can add a maneuver node uh, like this, like normal, and like I said before, you can cancel it there, or you can also, uh, you can add an orbit to your maneuver node, but I haven't quite figured out how to do that. Let's see, add maneuver, there should be like a little plus sign to add an orbit to it. There, oh, there we go. So instead of waiting for your ship to come around and then make a new maneuver node in your next orbit, you can just add or subtract orbits to your maneuver but we don't need that obviously all right let's uh let's launch the other part of our ship okay this is the other part of our of our space plane extravaganza we are done with those silly little dinky orange tanks and mainsail engines look at these guys these are actually the same size but they're more powerful and inside here we have our uh the body of our space plane Looks fairly familiar to the last thing we made. Now, why does it have wings, you might be asking. What are those going to do in space? They're not going to do anything. Actually, they are going to do one thing. The one thing they're going to do is they're going to look cool. And that's all I care about. Now, these guys, unlike other boosters, they don't use the, uh, the solid fuel. They use rocket fuel, which is the liquid fuel and oxidizer. And so they're not really boosters. And you can throttle them up and down as well. So they're really just all-in-one tank and engine combos and you can stack tanks on top of them just like this and I just put these adapters on here to look pretty uh, as we've learned from previous rocket designs like the pancake aer aerodynamics don't really matter in Kerbal Space Program at least not at this stage of the game look at that they all have my flag on them that's kind of cool I just didn't notice that before that's pretty neat uh, but basically we're just this is a pretty typical launch We've got uh, a little bit of asparagus staging. These outer eight guys are feeding these inner four guys, and those inner four guys are also feeding our nuclear engines, which we're going to use in our interplanetary stage. Since these, this interplanetary stage doesn't really need to take off as a plane itself from the ground, I figured it may as well just use the nuclear engines because they are more efficient in gravity. Now, for what for whatever reason, uh, this thing is spinning, and I, I don't know of any asymmetry in the thing. Something to do with... I, I don't understand. Ask someone who's like an astrophysicist or something who, who understands rocket science. Uh, I, I don't know. It's But it spins, and after we get rid of this outer stage, it'll stop. That's all you need to know. Oh, we need to start our gravity turn. I'm not even paying attention. Gosh. Uh, where's that 90 degrees? Over here. Okay, start turning. We went way past that mark. I was too busy talking. Okay. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's, it's a little hard to control at this point. But once we lose this stage, we'll bring it under control. Bye-bye. There we go. Stop spinning, please. Very nice. Now we just need to stop spinning. Stop spinning, please. <laughs> Any day now. Stop spinning. Yeah, okay, it is slowly stopping. I do have reaction wheels on each of these guys. So that's four in total. Wow, we're just veering all over the place with this thing. Uh, let's go ahead and make this guy our target. So I can see the ascending, descending node. 3.6! That's really bad. 
And we are currently at 46,000 feet. Pull that back over. There we go. That's a little bit better. Down to 2.7. Okay, I'll just keep that slightly off center to keep accounting for that. We're out of the thick part of the atmosphere. I can actually just turn over all the way. And we can just fix this once we get into orbit, if I don't fix it enough here. 2.0. And we may need to use a little... Actually, no, we should have some fuel left over, these boosters, and we can use it for our interplanetary stage. Down to 1.5. And we need to... I guess we're going to be behind our target. So we need to be below it so that we speed past, or so that we, uh, we're going faster. There we go. What's this say? 0.4. Okay, that's pretty close. And we've got like half of our fuel left. And let's see, what's this? 72. Okay, let's just keep it there for now. And yeah, we're going to be ahead of him. So you've all seen this before. I'm going to dock these, di these guys together. And then we shall depart for Drace. Okay, just about there. And of course, as usual, we're docking on the dark side of the planet. That's one little detail I haven't quite figured out. I do have it in chase mode. I tried it out. People said, hey, you should uh, try docking in chase mode. It really helps. I was like, yeah, whatever. Uh, and I tried it. Actually, yeah, it does really help. <laughs> you were right. Uh, okay, let's... um. Back, let's slow down a bit. I'm a little bit off center here. Hey, I'm having to look over my microphone. Sometimes I, I think I lean in too far in my microphone. I have to look over my microphone at the keyboard. We want to go, no, not that way, it's this way. That way, just a little bit. Okay, now stop. Perfect. Stop. Okay, now we're a little bit too high. Go forward. Forward. Yes, very nice. Uh, I just want to make sure to do this very accurately because of the fact we have a little bit of an overlap here. We're fitting together like puzzle pieces. And I don't want anything knocked off, particularly since we have these uh, these boosters still on the side, which I didn't factor into the equation when I designed the thing. But I think we're going to be okay. Let's go this way slightly. Yeah, I think this is pretty much Perfect. We should go maybe this way a little bit too. Kerschblau! Yes! Oh, come on. Connect! There we go! Hey, hey! That was pretty easy. Now, let's make sure that both of them connected. So, if I click on that... Uh oh Let's see. Control from here. Undock. Control from here. Control from here. Yeah, only one of them connected. So maybe that's just an issue with the game where it doesn't like to connect more than one. It will sometimes, but it doesn't really like to. Let's try. Let's try undocking. Let's try to redock. Uh, but if not, this should be stable enough for what we're doing. We don't really need both of them. Let's do that. Okay, and then this time, since we're already lined up, all we need to do is go forward this way out to about five to 10 meters away. Did they redock? Undock. I think it redocked already because I clicked, I pressed it the wrong, uh, the wrong direction. So we're gonna come out like this, then we're just going to reverse. And that should be perfectly aligned as it is. We just went one direction. And we didn't really bump into anything. And I will try to brighten this up. If you ever am watching footage from Kerbal Space Program videos from mine, uh, and it looks a little washed out, that's because I'm doing something in the dark and I'm making it brighter so you can see what's going on. Uh, because um, this game can be very dark sometimes. Okay, yeah, only one of them is docked, but that's okay. All right, fine, it was a nice idea. Uh, hopefully they work on that, but we have our super duper space plane there in the middle. And next episode, we're going to take off for Drace in our super space plane. And we've got some of these huge booster things left over uh, to help with our translation burn. See you later, guys. Take it easy. Have a good day. Bye-bye.